everyone. Welcome to the Ministry of Energy and Water Resources. My name is Jamar White. I'm the Director of Natural Resources in the Natural Resources Department of the Ministry. Our department, we are really geologists. We serve as government's geological unit. Um, in celebrating our energy month of activities. We organize this tour for the benefit of staff of the ministry and other stakeholders. So we would have representatives from a number of agencies that we work with um, in order to expose you guys to some of the work that we do. We've planned what we believe is an interesting tour and we hope that you enjoy it. We will be taking some stops to a number of sites. So our first stop, once everything goes to plan, we'll be at the Bowman Sun Pumping Station, where you'll be exposed to the water extraction operations, as well as their efforts to include renewable energy um, uh, as part of their operations. They have a high um, electricity bill, so they're seeking to reduce that bill and also generate revenue for the company by installing solar PVs. The next stop, we'll be going to the Walker's Sand Quarry, where we will be exposed to sand mining. Of course, everyone is well aware that sand is very important for the local construction industry. And we will discuss a number of, of things once we go to the quarry. We will talk about the supply and availability of sand and the issues relating to that. We will also talk about their efforts to rehabilitate the quarry. In Barbados, we have an unfortunate problem where many quarries are left abandoned as big scares in the landscape without having anything useful done with them. So the quarry has implemented a number of measures to rehabilitate the quarry, so you'll be exposed to that. You'll also have um, a demonstration of their drone technology. Within the industry, we use drones to assist us with resource planning and mapping. So we will have uh, a demo of that done. So I hope you guys will find that interesting. And we'll also be exposed to some of the other initiatives being undertaken by the quarry in terms of their composting, in terms of coastal preservation um, and protection and a number of other agricultural initiatives. And finally, well, we'll have our lunch stop where we go to Barclays Park and relax and have some lunch. After that, hopefully if time allows, we'll stop at the Blowers Limestone Quarry in St. James. And that quarry, we will examine the aspects of limestone extraction. Again, limestone is predominantly used in the local construction industry for a number of grades and boulders and, and different types of materials. And we'll also discuss a number of geological issues. We are well aware that most of the island is covered by limestone, and as a result of that, we get a number of hazards related to that. So we get caves, we get sinkholes, and we will discuss how these types of features can have an impact on infrastructural development and safety across the island. Please feel free to ask questions. We want it to be as interactive as possible. Reach out to any of the members of my team. I have Jade here, Jade Harding, and Jamal Gill, and Mr. Richard Murphy. Please stop us, ask us any questions if you have any things you don't quite understand. And last but not least, and most importantly, safety. We are going to sites that are active work sites. We've organized with the um, owners of the different quarries to try to manage the operations while we're there. But please listen to all of the members of my team as it relates to safety. We're going to some places that have some steep cliffs heavy machinery and different things like that. So please be very careful. Try not to wander off. Try to have a buddy system where you keep your eye on your partners and your, your colleagues. And most of all, have fun. Hi, good morning tour. Welcome to Bowmanston. Hi, hey, morning, morning. Bowmanston is basically our first pumping station on record. Um, Bormanston supplies water to the greater St. John, St. Andrew, St. Joseph, and we go as far as um, Mount Hillaby, so it can feed as far as the water contribution goes as far as that. And we do that by putting water generally from Bormanston into our intermittent reservoir at Golden Ridge, where we then move water off into Castle Grant, and then we gravity feed back through the network. Bormanston is like an underground river. The, the water, we, the rainfall would have percolated through the ground and it culminates coming in a, a river that underground that meanders. It actually meanders somewhere between, actually see the old building that you saw 
that ever in that look derelict. It meanders right under there and it meanders right under here under this workshop. Then there's an attic that will go to Bowmanstone Well, which I'll take you and show you where the well area is. And then we have another well just below in this in this older building below. And that we call that high level. And what we usually do, we go down in this level and we actually create a dam purposely. We purposely create the dam to raise the water level so that our pumps can work in the in the well. Um, my name is Wayne Richards, I should have started with that. I work as director of projects for the Barbados Water Authority, but prior to that, I was the engineer in charge of pumping. The engineer in charge of pumping usually is not only in charge of Bowmanston, we are in charge of pumping for the whole island. Right now, my successor is Hector Marshall. Hector will be in charge of all the pumping stations. We've got two spring sources, 22 pumping stations, 15 repumping stations, about 26 reservoirs. On a day-to-day -day basis, we take levels for all the stations all over the island. It's just that whoever has pumping generally resides, well, resides at Bowmanston. And the teams that do the repairs for all the stations, all the reservoirs, they move from out from this location to all the various locations. There's a lot of skilled people here. Generally, our skills are wide. We would have like a machinist here, welders here, we, have, um, we would have people trained in meter reading and meter repair. Generally, innovations start from Bowmanston. Remember, Barbados Water Authority is the largest energy consumer on the island of Barbados. So therefore, most of the innovations coming out of energy destroy the desperation has started from Bowmanston and has emanated out. What we did so far with a lot of our solar, our solar is tied, we tie it to loads. That's how, it, that's how it all began for us. We keep tying to loads to offset the cost of operations. Okay? But most of used to be as high as $160,000 a month. We try to incorporate drives into the system, which improve power quality. And in so doing, we actually lowered the bill. It came down to about $120,000 a month. Then now, each time we then, at that, that time now, I think we added some more drives. And then what we will do too is, um, coupled with the solar, we try to obliterate the bill as low as possible. Now, that has the, then we what we will do. We will try to replicate this where is where it is possible for as many sites as possible to try to keep the cost of water affordable. Let me show you. Let me show you Bowmanston Station. We can start from the well, and then we will move our way across. This is the. This is the mechanical workshop. We spend most of our times. We modify and we put up most of the pumps for Barbados. And here, what we do, we assemble. Generally, we get submersible motors. This is one of them. They are various sizes. This one is 150 kilowatt. This is a 125. This here so is about that one. This so is about 100 horsepower, which is about the same size, five kilowatt. They're about. Okay, what we do, various motors are coupled to different pumps. Different pumps have different heads and it, and it all depends on the location where you're working the pump. A pump is not a pump is not a pump. You've got to be very clinical in understanding what you're doing. We just can't take up a pump and just put it anywhere. I can't take this pump and put it to work at, let me say no, like um, in constant. It might be a little too small for the operation and then it won't give me enough water then sometimes it might not deliver the right head because you don't put the right pump in. What we do sometimes we install a jacket on top of this pump, just a PVC casing. What it does is, is make that it, jacket will start from here go down and what it would do, it would do is keep the water close to the body, drag it up before it come in here. The, the, uh, in doing so, that cooling effect over the body more to keep the water cool. So, because if you put it just in a well as is, if it's just in a well of water, you put this down as is, the water can come like this. Then the cooling effect on this, this water can get warm and the body of water in this general area will be warm. If you put it at the bottom with the cooling jacket and, you, and the water comes over it, what happens is then it, 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 it produces a cooling effect over the water. The bearings, truss bearings are at the bottom. So when, it, when we drop that jacket, drop in that jacket, so to make sure that bearing cool. And that will last a longer time with the jacket. Maybe a little 
six years as opposed to two years. Your maintenance for submersibles should be something like maybe at the most once a year to 18, I would say 18 months, one a year and a half. The longest you should leave it before we pull it up just to service it. Just to check the bearings and the pads, clear out the medium, the medium inside of here. Make sure that the insulation and check everything. Check the, the pumps to make sure that there's no wear on, um, inside on your, between your wear rings and your impellers and make sure that they're not worn down. All these things cause energy to go up. Actually, Bomaston's peak is about 2.4 million imperial gallons a day. At the bell, we produce 10 million gallons a day. Yeah, the bell is our largest pumping station. Bell is the heart throb for Bridgetown, for most of Christ Church, going across the um, St. James. Um, going into St. James with our Hayen tourist, uh, tourist, tourist area, and also as a supplementary aid, because we could get as much as 12 million gallons off if we had to, if it had to step up the ante. We have been blessed that we have been, um, we are born on an island where our water percolates. The dirt, the dirt is the first step. When it water filters through the dirt, it takes out contaminants like pesticides and stuff. Those things hold to dirt. Dirt, like purposes, you know, besides growing food, it holds the pesticides and stuff. The next filtration for most bacteria and stuff, and that is going through the limestone. Some bacteria will get through and will be contained inside the water. And then when you do, we add just a little chlorine. But so this is the chlorine line here? Right. So the chlorine is added right down to the source, and it's at one part per million. Right, one part per million. So right. So the mix of gallons for every million gallons. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. For every million gallons. Yeah. So we, we know in terms of chemical engineering, PPMs. So one part per million. Yeah. And the chlorine to limestone is a very good bacterial, to clean bacteria, virus and that type of stuff. So that's why our um, water is so drinkable. It's really the best water in the Caribbean, and you know that. Our, our water, our water, our water, listen, honestly, and we, and we, and we, because of, we don't have a lot of surface water, we are blessed that we don't get a lot of contaminants coming in. So it's, uh, to tell the truth, we could either go to desalination for everything, but the best thing, the easiest thing to do is look for the problem and limit the, 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 the influx of common contamination. So this is yeah. your chlorine source here, and that the Barbados Water Authority has a chlorine team, and you see these yellow bottles, where they actually inject um, mm -hmm. chlorine gas, mm -hmm. which becomes um, right. chloride, the, the chloride ICL or minus, down inside of the water. You could actually drink this water here right now. Right. This is actually a 420 AC on the AC side kilowatt system, but it's actually as full as like 500 on the DC side. Technically, it was supposed to be one megawatt, but we reduced the size as Wayne highlighted to get better quality of equipment um, and put in the equipment for the Greeks. Monocrystallines tend to have a, 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 a less degree of variation in terms of energy, energy production. One of the things that we noticed that when we got cleaner energy, this is clean energy, clean in terms of power and in terms of CO2, the pumps actually perform better. The pumps perform better. So you see panels, but not all panels are the same. Where do you wear panel design? Oh, that's a, that's a, that question is like you, it's a beautiful question. You, you try not to interfere with the topography of the land. So you want, this land actually has its, has its own particular drainage mechanism. You don't want to in, um, also interfere with the ecology of the land. If you look on it here, you realize all they did is just draw holes, dig holes, and just pile, pile it in together. It's with people at the Division of Energy and Barbados Water Authority, but that's where we are interested in sustainable engineering, quality of engineering. This is a Barbadian Division of Energy solar project going on here right now.